Welcome to Get Cooking in Cloud, where we share the best recipes to apply in your cloud kitchen. I am Priyanka, and in this episode, we'll share the recipe to set up a cold DR pattern for applications that are primarily deployed on-premise. So let's dive in. Your DR plan would depend on your specific application and recovery goals. Let's consider a few scenarios to understand this. If you run batch processing workloads, they tend to be non-mission critical and don't need to be designed for high availability. In such cases, you would use preemptible virtual machine instances in conjunction with Google Cloud Storage. And that's your DR plan. If you run an e-commerce site, then the actual purchasing pipeline needs to have high availability, but the email process that sends those notifications to customers can tolerate a bit of delay. This is a mix of hot purchasing and warm or cold notification patterns. If you have a video streaming solution, then from the search to actually streaming content, the entire experience needs to be HA or the customer might turn to your competitor. Well, let's talk about an interesting company, Main Street Art. They run their application on premise and are building a DR infrastructure on Google Cloud. They are now working out a disaster recovery plan with a low budget and are okay with a bit high RPO and RTO values. This means they need to set up a cold DR pattern. In cold DR pattern, Main Street Art needs minimal resources in the DR Google Cloud project, just enough to enable the recovery scenario. When a disaster occurs, the failover strategy requires a mirror of the production environment to be started in Google Cloud. Let's see how this would work. We create a VPC network. Then we configure the connectivity between the on-premise network and the Google Cloud network. We need a cloud storage bucket as the target for our backup data. Now, for your on-premise machine to upload database backups to Google Cloud, we will need a service account key to authenticate your machine within an automated script. We would use IAM policies to restrict access to the right user as well as ensure that the service account has the minimal permissions required. And make sure uploads and downloads to and from the cloud storage bucket are working. Then you finally script the data transfer. Create a scheduled task to run that script. And then create custom images that are configured for each type of server in the production environment. You configured the DNS to point to your internet-facing web services, and then create a deployment manager template that will create servers in your Google Cloud network using the previously configured custom images. When a disaster hits, all you need is to execute the deployment manager template, which will create a Google Cloud deployment automatically. Apply the most recent database backups and transaction logs from the cloud storage bucket. Test the application works as expected by simulating a user in the recovered environment. Then finally, point the cloud DNS to the web server on Google Cloud. When the production environment is running on-premise again and the environment can support production workloads, we reverse the steps that we followed. Typically, it goes something like this. Take a backup and transaction logs of the database running on Google Cloud. Copy and apply the backup files to the database in pr production environment. At this stage, you should prevent connections to the application in Google Cloud, or you can stop the connections after the database had been successfully restored and apply any transactions that occurred after the backup was taken. In our case, we need to stop the connections to the global load balancer. From this point, your application will be unavailable until you finish restoring the production environment. Configure Cloud DNS to point to your on-premise web service. Ensure that the process you had in place to copy data to Cloud Storage is operating as expected. Then finally, delete your deployments. Well, there you have it. If you are running your application on premise and have a constrained budget and can work with high RTO and RPO values, then a cold DR pattern is the way to go. 
we learned how to approach recovering the environment from failure in a cold DR scenario. That's all for today on Get Cooking in Cloud. Here's hoping you're cooking up your own DR strategy. Join us next time where we will share the recipe to implement a warm standby DR pattern for Main Street R. If you would like to see more such content, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.